Here we are in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to make some tessellating patterns. Those are patterns that seamlessly repeat themselves. Now there's some keys to making tessellating patterns. And I'm going to show you how to do so. If I look at my design right here that I made earlier, and you can see it tessellate over here once I've created that pattern and filled it in a larger box, you'll notice that what's on all four corners matches. It's all aligned up. Alignment matching is key to tessellations. You'll also notice that to make my pattern more interesting I have a design in the middle top that matches the middle bottom in the middle left that matches the middle right and then another design in the center. I've also used color in a rhythmic way and to try to create unity to try to make it look visually appealing and as you can see over here I've also set up my workspace to be able to work well with patterns. I've got my Pathfinder palette out here, I've got my Align palette out here, I have my Shapes palette persistent, my Pen Tool palette, I also have my Swatches palette out here, so if I want to choose from any of these swatch books over here that'll take some of the guesswork out of color out, I have that available. I also have this other palette here called Color with a K, and that's in Window Extensions. So. Let's go ahead and begin with making a new pattern. Um, so here we are, Command N. One of the keys to making repetitive patterns are to start out with a square document. Now I've set mine at 100 by 100 pixels. Now remember, we're in Illustrator. We're using vectors. Size doesn't really matter as long as, in this case for a pattern, we have a square document. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. I can choose how large I want things to be when I output them in the end. So I've gone ahead and done a 100 by 100 pixel document. And you can see it's really large because it's zoomed in to 906%. I can zoom out and see that change. Now, for alignment purposes, I'm going to turn on, go to Illustrator Pref Preferences, I'm going to turn on Guides and Grid. I'm going to set up my grid so that I have a grid line every 100 pixels with 10 subdivisions. Every 10 pixels, I'm going to see align. This is going to help me line things up. Press OK. I see no grid now until I turn that grid. I like my keyboard, hotkeys, my shortcuts, command, quote, turns on my grid. OK? Now, the other thing I want to do is turn on my smart guides. Smart guides are going to help me see where the center point is, where things intersect. And you can see the hotkey for that is command U. All right, now I'm going to run you through, through the essence of this and then drop back to my other pattern and show you where, what the key is to help you define your pattern. So uh, if I want to, I could fill this with a background color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just try to keep this brief here. So let me go ahead and get to work with my corners. Um, you want to think about what kind of, what are you going for? What kind of pattern do you want? You know, I, your first one, your second one, they're going to look different. So as you go through and make your different patterns, I'd like you to try different shapes out. I'd also like you to think, before you start, what do you want to see? And you'll, you'll, you'll start to figure that out as you practice doing these. Um, now I'm going to go ahead, I like stars, I'm going to use a star to create my pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a star. Now, you see I have a many-pointed star. To change the number of points in a star, I can press my up arrow to add more points, down arrow to have less points. Um, now when I, when I draw a star, I'm going to have my, my points line up with the side of my artboard. Now, I, as you can see, I can rotate this and have it be at any angle, but I want to have it line up with the, the side of my artboard. So I'm going to press shift. Holding shift down conforms a shape to an axis, in this case horizontal and vertical axis. And I've got my shape right there. Now, in my other pattern you can see I used repetition and I have these stars repeat each other, repeat themselves, change color. To do so, I'm going to make sure my star is selected right here and I'm going to go ahead, let's go ahead and change the color of that. Okay, if I press Command C, I copy. Command F Command F is paste in front, paste on top. Now, you don't see anything yet. I'm going to change the color, and I'm going to hold Alt and Shift, Alt and Shift, and drag towards the center. That's going to maintain the same center point and allow me to see that. There we go, that repetition. Again, let me do that one more time. Command C, Command F. 
I'm going to go ahead and pick yet a lighter color, hold Alt and Shift, shrink that towards the center, and there we go. Now when you make your patterns, what I suggest you do if you're going to use repetition is that you select your shape here and you group things together, Command G. Grouping things together allows you to pick this up and in its entirety and not worry about leaving one of these shapes behind. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, I'm use my space bar here to move over. If I want to create a duplicate of this, a couple ways I can do it. I'm going to hold down Alt Option with this shape selected, and you'll see those two arrows pop up. That says, hey, if you click and drag, you're going to create a duplicate. Now, when I do so, I see that duplicate, and I can move it around anywhere. But if I hold Shift, again, it can it makes it conform to that axis. And you can see this green line start to show up. That's where Smart Guides is helping me out so that when I bring this here, oh, to this intersect, you can see that intersect shows up there in highlighted green. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these now and group them together and replicate that on all four corners, holding Alt down, dragging, and I might need to zoom in, move things around here. Let me make sure that things are intersecting. Do I have an intersect? Yes, I do have an intersect. Now I have the same design on all four corners. I'm going to repeat that when I make a shape on the left, in the middle, with the right, and on the top, in the middle, of the bottom, and in the center. Now. I want to keep this tutorial brief to maximize your time making your patterns. Let me go back to my other pattern here and show you what the key is to making this a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and go to my layers palette here. And you can see I have all my groupings, my paths and whatnot. And you know, if I click on this right here, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay. Now, this is the key is at the very bottom Underneath all my designs, I have a box that has no fill color, no stroke. But if I select that thing and move it away, you can see it's empty. But this box is crucial. If you were to read in the help menu the link that I put on the website yesterday, that the key to creating seamless patterns is to be able to have got this box underneath here which has nothing filled in it. It's at the very bottom. It's lined up with my artboard. I've got all my designs lined up. So when I select everything here and go to Edit, Define Pattern, you'll see it says New Swatch. I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. Press OK. Your swatch palette contains that new pattern. So let's go ahead and see what's happening with this. I'm going to go ahead and use my rectangle tool here and draw a big box so I can see my pattern begin to tessellate. Nothing's showing up right now. If you look over here, I have set to no fill color, no stroke color. Now, go over to my swatch palette and let's go ahead and click. I've defined my pattern with the name Roots. Let's see how it looks. Here we go. I have a tessellating pattern. I have a tessellating pattern here. It repeats itself seamlessly. If I make this box bigger, you'll see more of the pattern starts to show up. And there we go. So again, the key is here, getting everything aligned on the corners, using color to create rhythm, make it look interesting. Having that box, that invisible box that matches your artboard, that 100 by 100 pixel box with no fill in it at the bottom. When you select everything and you go to edit, define pattern, you're going to see you created a tessellating pattern. Make sure you're saving your work constantly. Have these palettes open. Use your align tools if needed. Use reflection. Command C copy. Command F paste on top. Hold and shift to maintain axis. And there we go. Tessellating patterns in Adobe Illustrator.